At the foot of an isolated hill, amidst windswept plains and fields of wheat, stood Lucy's wooden house. At just eighteen years old, Lucy had recently lost her father to a terrible pneumonia. Her mother, whom she had never known, had passed away during childbirth. Lucy found herself alone, having to leave behind the only life she had ever known. Her father's last words, Will, were a request for her to leave and start a new life. Lucy, you need to be strong, you need to leave this place, he said, his voice hoarse. Go to the city of Amberwood, to your Aunt Beatrice and Uncle Robert. They will take care of you. After her father's funeral, Lucy boarded an old bus that passed by her house once a week. Her luggage was modest, just a bag of clothes and a box of mementos from her parents. You'll do well, Lucy. You're a strong girl, Mrs. Jenkins, the kind neighbor who accompanied her to the bus stop, said. Remember, always look forward and never look back. Lucy simply nodded, struggling to hold back tears. She got on the bus and turned around for one last look at her now empty and silent house. The journey to Amberwood was long and tiring. The city was known for its large perfume factory, which exported wonderful essences throughout the country. The town's economy revolved around the factory, practically every resident had some connection to it. When the bus finally stopped at Amberwood's small station, Lucy was greeted by her Aunt Beatrice and Uncle Robert. Beatrice, with her gray hair and warm eyes, hugged Lucy tightly. Robert, a tall and quiet man, nodded in approval. Welcome to our home, Lucy, Beatrice said, with a gentle smile. We know this is a difficult time for you, but we're here to help. Your family now. Lucy entered her new home, a mix of anxiety and hope filling her heart. She doesn't yet know it, but this move is just the beginning of a journey that will change her life forever. Daybreak in Amberwood was marked by the shrill sound of the perfume factory's bell. In the first light of day, Lucy found herself ready for her daily journey as a cleaner in the factory. On her first day of work, her face illuminated by the light of the rising sun and dressed in a faded blue uniform, she entered the vast building. The smell of perfumes was intoxicating, a rich and complex aroma she had never experienced before. In the whirlwind of scents and noises, Lucy met Henry. An elderly man, but with an easy smile and a kindness that immediately put her at ease. Hello, my dear, Henry said, extending a calloused hand. I heard you're new around here. My name is Henry. If you need anything, just come find me. Life in the factory was not easy, and many didn't make it any easier for Lucy. They laughed at her worn-out clothes, her accent, her naivety. But Lucy was resilient and determined to make this new life something better. She worked hard, always comforted by Henry's kindness in times of difficulty. Despite the mockery, there was one exception, Jack. Young, handsome, and charismatic, he stood out in a sea of indifferent faces. Jack seemed genuinely interested in her, attentively listening to her stories about life in the countryside, sharing laughs and gentle moments. Don't worry about them, Lucy, Jack once said after a particularly unpleasant incident with other workers. They're just not used to someone who is different. You're special, never forget that. Days turned into weeks, and Lucy found herself drawn to Jack's kindness, his easygoing nature, and his captivating smile. She fell in love, though silently and secretly. And so, Lucy carried on with life, now more accustomed to factory and city life, nurturing a quiet love for Jack, her only true friend besides Henry in that universe of sense and uncertainties. Spring blossomed in Amberwood, and love seemed to be in the air. Lucy and Jack's relationship flourished each day. They spent every free moment together, strolling through the town center, enjoying ice cream at the local parlor, talking about dreams and plans. Lucy felt like she was floating on cloud nine, a happiness she had never experienced before. Henry, always observant, seemed concerned. Lucy, 
I need to tell you something, he said one afternoon, after an exhausting day at the factory. These city folks, they're clever. Be careful, my dear. Lucy smiled at Henry, shaking her head. Don't worry, Henry, she said. I know what I'm doing. The love I feel for Jack is real, and I know he feels the same. But life had a bitter twist in store for Lucy. After a few weeks, she discovered she was pregnant. Feeling a whirlwind of emotions, fear, joy, anxiety, she went to tell Jack. She found him with his friends, laughing and joking. Jack, upon seeing Lucy, smiled and walked over to her. Jack, she said, her throat tightening. I'm pregnant. Jack's reaction was like a punch to the gut. He laughed, a cruel laughter that squeezed Lucy's heart. Did you really think I would stay with a country girl like you, Lucy, he said, disdain in his voice. All this, it was a bet. A bet that I couldn't get with the new country girl in town. The revelation left Lucy stunned. She looked at Jack, tears welling in her eyes. You, you used me, she whispered, the pain cutting like a razor. Jack just shrugged, returning to his friends, leaving Lucy alone with her broken heart and a life growing inside her. Lucy walked alone down the street, the setting sun casting long, sorrowful shadows. She carried a child in her womb and an indescribable pain in her heart. She didn't know what to do. Autumn painted the town of Amberwood with vibrant colors, but it didn't bring warmth to Lucy's heart. As the days grew shorter and colder, her belly began to swell, marking for everyone the consequence of a deceitful love. Rumors spread like cold wind, whispering on every corner, vibrating against old stone walls and under the church roofs on Sundays. Every step Lucy took through the town was marked by curious glances, malicious giggles, and murmured words that followed her like dark shadows. The conservatism of Amberwood had never felt so bitter. Then came the dismissal. Isabel, the relentless matriarch of the perfume factory, summoned her to her dark wooden office with aged leather. Isabel, behind her gleaming glasses, looked at Lucy with coldness, the gravity of her words echoing in the silent space between them. I cannot, and will not, tolerate a pregnant employee, Lucy, Isabel said with the kind of authority that only comes from years in control. This factory is the lifeblood of this town, and I will not allow it to be tarnished by rumors and gossip. But Isabel, I need this job. Lucy protested, her face pale with surprise. She was desperate, uncertainty about the future haunting her. It's not a matter of need, Lucy. It's a matter of reputation, and you, dear, are a walking scandal now. You're fired. And so, Lucy found herself jobless, carrying a child, with the rejection of the town haunting her. But as the factory doors closed behind her, the doors of her home opened. Beatrice and Robert, her aunt and uncle, welcomed Lucy without judgment, with open arms and hearts full of love. We're here for you, Lucy, Beatrice said, holding her niece's trembling hands. We'll weather this storm together. You'll never be alone, Lucy, reassured Robert, placing a hand on her shoulder in a gesture of support and unconditional love. The sun was already setting when Lucy found Henry in the factory courtyard, still dressed in his janitor uniform, his hands calloused from years of work. He looked older and wearier than usual. She poured out the story to him, her voice trembling with accumulated anguish. I understand, Lucy, he said gently, holding her hands. I want to help. Lucy shook her head, her brown eyes shimmering with deep sadness. You can't, Henry, she said. You already have your own life and family to take care of. And your job here, you barely earn enough for yourself. Henry merely smiled, an enigmatic smile that made it seem like he had a secret. And, as if following a movie script, he revealed a fact that would change Lucy's life forever. 
I am not just a janitor, Lucy, he said with a calm yet firm voice. I am the true owner of this perfume factory. The shock and disbelief that spread across Lucy's face were almost comical. She stammered for a moment, unable to form a coherent response. Henry continued the revelation, explaining how Isabel, the tyrannical woman who had fired Lucy, was actually his sister whom he had allowed to manage the factory due to a serious illness that had forced him to move to the big city. The janitor disguise was his way of staying connected with the workers and gaining a clearer insight into his factory. As Lucy still remained speechless, Henry made an offer that was almost too good to be true. He offered Lucy the chance for a new life, education, and a home in the big city, along with assistance in caring for her future child. Why? Lucy managed to whisper, her mind spinning with the revelations and the offer. Henry's answer was simple yet filled with sincerity. For a long time, I have been surrounded by people who only want my fortune. But you, Lucy, you are different. You are genuine and kind. I want to spend my money on someone who truly deserves it. As night fell over Amberwood, the town that had turned against her, Lucy found herself facing a new life, full of hope and possibilities, thanks to an unexpected angel named Henry. Lucy's move to the big city was marked by conflicting feelings of anxiety and hope. The gleaming towers of glass and steel were a constant reminder of how far she was from her old home in Amberwood, but they also promised new opportunities, a fresh start. The house that Henry had arranged for her and the future child was modest yet comfortable, a true home away from home. In the first few weeks in the city, Lucy adjusted to the new rhythms of urban life. Henry's routine included regular visits to check on how she was adapting. It was during one of those visits that Lucy gave birth to a healthy baby boy, a beautiful little boy with dark hair and bright eyes. She named him Ethan. Despite the upheaval of the move and Ethan's birth, Lucy managed to start her studies in economics at a local university. It was a challenging discipline, but Lucy worked hard, fueled by the possibility of a better future for herself and her son. She divided her time between attending classes, studying, and taking care of Ethan, a delicate balance that sometimes left her exhausted but always fulfilled. Meanwhile, her friendship with Henry blossomed. Henry visited regularly, bringing gifts for Ethan and words of encouragement for Lucy. They would talk about life in the city, her studies, and Ethan, of course. I believed in you, Lucy, from the very beginning, Henry confessed during one of his visits. And now you're proving that I was right. Henry, Lucy said with a weary smile, you've given me and Ethan more than a chance. You've given us a future. Those early months in the big city were tough, but Lucy's determination carried her forward. There were still many challenges to face, but for the first time in a long time, Lucy felt in control of her own destiny. Thanks to Henry, she had been given a fresh start and was determined to make the most of it. The years in university were a whirlwind of ups and downs for Lucy. Between diaper changes, sleepless nights, homework, and exams, she rarely had time for herself. Each day was a battle, an endless journey of challenges and small victories. How do you do it, Lucy? Henry asked during one of his visits, an expression of admiration on his face. I have no choice, Henry, she replied with a tired smile. Ethan depends on me, and I won't let him down. Throughout the years, Henry remained a constant pillar of support for Lucy. When things got tough, when she felt like she was about to break under the pressure, he was there to remind her of how far she had come. You're stronger than you think, he would often say. And in her heart, Lucy knew he was right. Finally, after years of hard work and sacrifice, Lucy's graduation day arrived. Her degree in economics was a testament to her strength, determination, and ability to overcome all odds. After graduation, Lucy entered the corporate world as an assistant to an executive in a large corporation. The work was challenging, 
but Lucy proved herself up to the task, utilizing the skills she acquired in university and her desire to make a difference. Soon, her superiors recognized her competence and dedication, and she was promoted to a managerial position, a position of leadership and responsibility. Meanwhile, Ethan was growing up in a loving environment. Lucy made sure to spend every spare moment with him, ensuring he never felt unprotected or unloved. Over the years, Ethan blossomed into an intelligent, kind, and caring boy, much like his mother. Ten years had passed since Lucy arrived in the big city. She was far from the helpless young woman who had arrived, now, she was a strong, independent, and respected woman in her profession. Thanks to Henry's support and her own determination, Lucy had overcome the obstacles life had thrown at her, creating a better life for herself and her son. The journey had been long and arduous, but every step had been worth it. Henry's health, once stable, began to rapidly decline. He grew weaker, spending most of his time resting. Lucy, who had always been by his side, grew alarmed to see her dear friend in such a state. You need to rest, Henry, Lucy said during one of her visits, holding her friend's wrinkled hand. Ethan and I need you. Henry, though weak, managed a smile and squeezed Lucy's hand. You've always been a light in my life, Lucy, he said with a hoarse voice. Your friendship has been a gift to me. And seeing you and Ethan grow, becoming the wonderful people you are, has been the greatest joy of my life. And then, the inevitable happened. Henry passed away, leaving a void in Lucy's life. The world seemed to have lost its sparkle. She felt as if she had lost a piece of herself. He was suffering, Mom, Ethan said, trying to console Lucy. Now he's at peace. During the reading of the will, everyone was shocked and the lawyer revealed that Henry had left everything to Lucy, his house, his bank accounts, and even the perfume factory in Amberwood. Isabel, who was present, was incredulous. This must be a mistake, she exclaimed. Why would he leave everything to this, this nobody? The lawyer simply shrugged. These were Henry's final wishes, he said. And he made it clear that Lucy was like a daughter to him. Lucy, still in a state of shock, knew that a great responsibility rested on her shoulders. But for Henry's sake, she was ready to face it. Ten years after her not-so-amicable departure, Lucy found herself returning to Amberwood, the small town where it all began. Now a respected and successful businesswoman, she was faced with the same town that ridiculed, mocked, and underestimated her. The town was apprehensive about her return. They depended on the perfume factory, which was now owned by Lucy. Relocating the factory headquarters would surely mean ruin for Amberwood, a blow the town could never recover from. Lucy's triumphant arrival in a sleek, black limousine caused a stir. The shocked town watched her, from Isabel, who had been her boss, to Jack, who had broken her heart. At a grand party organized in her honor, Lucy took the microphone and began to speak. You have no idea how much of a pleasure it is to be back, she started, the sharp coldness in her words silencing the crowd. She exposed the injustices she had endured, reminding them of how she was treated. She spoke of Jack, of her disappointment and betrayal. And then, to everyone's relief, she announced that she would keep the factory in town, but made it clear, from now on, things will be different. Everyone will be treated as equals. With the determination of a lioness, Lucy took the reins of the factory. She began implementing immediate changes, raising wages, improving working conditions, and implementing a merit-based system. She faced resistance, of course. Isabel, in particular, was against all the changes Lucy was implementing. But Lucy didn't back down. She knew she was doing the right thing, and in the end, it would benefit not only the employees but the entire town. The factory is no longer a place where you will be exploited, Lucy said in a meeting with all the employees. Now, 
it's a place where your hard work will be valued and rewarded. And Isabel, you don't call the shots here anymore. And so, Lucy, the girl from the countryside who was ridiculed and mistreated, returned as a queen. She proved to be more than just a good manager, she was a leader, strong, fair, and immensely generous. The town that underestimated her now looked at her with respect and admiration. From her luxurious office in the factory, Lucy watched Jack. Now a mere factory worker under her command, he was a shadow of the charming young man who had broken her heart all those years ago. One day, Jack gathered the courage to speak to Lucy. He found her in her office, asking for an opportunity to express his remorse. Lucy, he began, his gaze downcast, I'm sorry. For everything that happened. I was wrong, and... I understand if you never want to forgive me. Lucy stared at him for a long moment, her eyes hard. But then she sighed, her gaze softening slightly. Jack, she finally said, I forgive you. But that doesn't mean things can go back to how they were. We are different people now. Jack nodded, unable to hide the disappointment on his face. Lucy felt a twinge of sadness in her heart, but she knew she was doing the right thing. Lucy embarked on the arduous work of transforming the perfume factory. She knew she had the opportunity to ensure that no other young woman would go through what she had faced. Lucy paid particular attention to the treatment of women in the factory. She implemented stricter policies against harassment, increased maternity leave, and established a mentoring program for young female workers. During her overhaul, Lucy uncovered a series of irregularities in the factory's accounts. Isabel, her former boss, had embezzled large sums of money. The discovery made Lucy furious, but she remembered Henry and decided not to take drastic measures against her late friend's sister. Instead of firing Isabel, Lucy chose to demote her to the position of janitor. Isabel protested, but in the end, she had to accept the role, having no other choice. Isabel, Lucy said, looking into the eyes of her former boss. This is your second chance. Make good use of it. And so, Lucy brought the justice she had longed for, creating a safer and more equitable work environment for all. The humble young woman from Amberwood had become the protector of those who, like her, could be victims of injustices. The perfume factory in Amberwood had a new lease of life under Lucy's leadership. She had become a beacon of justice and equity, contrasting vividly with the toxic environment that existed before her arrival. As the company thrived, Lucy also ensured that her son, Ethan, had the secure and prosperous life she never had. Ethan grew up loved and respected, free from the discrimination and judgment that Lucy faced when she was young. At the end of the day, after a long day of work, Lucy would sit in her office chair and pick up a photo of Henry. The image was a constant reminder of the kindness of a man who had changed her life forever. She ran her fingers over the surface of the photo, tracing Henry's features. He had been much more than a friend, an angel who entered her life when she needed it most. Thank you, Henry, she whispered, her voice filled with gratitude and affection. I did it. She added, a radiant smile appearing on her face. With the photo in her hands, Lucy leaned back in her chair and looked out the window of her office. Amberwood, the town that once rejected her, now relied on her. And she was more than ready to face the challenge.